Want to have the best time at UK Games Expo? Stay tuned! Hi and welcome to Tabletop Gaming, my name is Charlie and we are the home of the monthly magazine on all things tabletop. But today we are talking about the event in the gaming calendar for us UK lot every single year. You guessed it, it's UK Games Expo. Now not only is it a big deal for us gamers, it is also a big event. There's a lot going on, there's multiple different halls, there's different options and it can feel quite overwhelming knowing what you're going to be doing. Should I go here? What if I miss out on this? What if I get home and realise I never did that. It's okay, we've got you covered with a little bit of everything in terms of what you need to look at, what you want to be aware of, and how you might best plan your day. So without further ado, what is UK Games Expo? Okay, putting it simply, it's an event in Birmingham at the NEC. It is there for exhibitors, so you'll have people coming from all over the country, but also all over the world to show you the cool things that they're up to. Now those range from massive companies, ones that have thousands of games that they're distributing, or hundreds of games that they're publishing or all of the big boys in the industry, all the way down to the people that have made their first game and just want to give it an outing. They want to see whether you like it, they want to see if you'll sign up to their Kickstarter. It is such a range of different games, different game styles, different game opportunities, but ultimately you're bound to find a game that you absolutely love in and amongst those halls. So let's start by talking about the exhibitors. They are the main draw of the event. You are looking at two halls basically full. Now these halls, we're not talking your sports hall. These are massive. You are talking hundreds upon hundreds of exhibitors of all different sizes. Including, by the way, Tabletop Gaming. We're going to be there. Make sure you check us out. We are right near the gaming hall. So if you are playing games with your friends, it's only a short walk to be able to find us. Now, quite nice buried in all of that if you end up buying too much stuff or you're worried about carrying things around there are two options that UK Games Expo give you one is a shop and drop so you basically rent a space I think it's three pounds and you have a certain area that you can go and drop your things off into for the day the other option if you are perhaps coming by train and can't get everything back on because you've bought too much you've utilized too much of the shop and drop and now you've got 12 bags full to try and lug home well, they also do a posting home service, which I should have remembered is called pack and post, to pack and post your stuff home. So you haven't got to worry too much about physically getting it home. Next up of something you should be aware of is the bring and buy. So this is more your second hand market for games and it is, it's in the name. It's just, some people will bring a game to sell and then you get an opportunity to go and buy it. The reason why this is so important is because you're getting things from other gamers. You're not buying off eBay where you're not sure who you're getting it from. You're getting it from people that are passionate about the industry because they're at a gaming expo. It's also a great opportunity to pick up some really good bargains. Now, you can register your games ahead of time until they are dropped off, they don't show on the system, but if you turn up and you're like, hey, I wanna know what I can go and pick up, you can have a quick scroll online to find out what's in there already and then make your way there if they've got your grail game in. Now, they do open the night before on the Thursday, so you can drop them off, but you do need to be aware there are generally quite long queues to do so because it's a great place to sell your games. A few more recent changes though, you can now only drop off a maximum of 20 20 games, which in itself is quite a lot, and they must be priced £5 or higher. It's also cash only, so bear that in mind. There's also open gaming and the board game library. Now remember, our stand is right near there. We're at 21004, which I think means like all two. Four. but basically you can probably veer at us from where you are so definitely check us out but the whole point of going to a games expo is to be able to play and enjoy games right well open gaming is your opportunity to do so basically imagine a hall that is mostly tables and chairs with some really cool game mats that let you just sit down and play your games add to that that if you don't have a game or you've seen one and you want to try it out before you buy it there is also a games library there so you pay a deposit to get a library card of some description that then means you can pick some of the games from the library that is there equally this year we've got some really cool bargain book goodie bags so if you want a load of games to play come grab one off us head back to the open gaming and get playing next up let's talk tournaments and play testing now these some of these you expect okay you expect that there will probably be a presence of people play testing their games perhaps even of playtest uk who are the big group that sort of facilitates facilitate the playtesting. This is a big presence, this is a big opportunity to play games before they get to retail, before they sometimes even get to Kickstarter. They might be at various stages, they might be an early prototype, they might be basically done but just need some rules, niggles, and your feedback shapes how they are. 
you might be able to find your new favourite game in and amongst the playtesting before anybody else and before it's even formally existing. It's quite an exciting opportunity. But equally, something that really excels in having the size of the event that it is are the tournaments. Because you can go and play tournaments in all sorts of different games that you wouldn't be able to do anywhere else. Some of those have exclusive opportunities. So Star Wars Unlimited has got a game map that you can win, for example. You might be able to pick up promo cards from other ones. You might be able to play uh, competitive games of Catan in the championships. You might be able to do all sorts of different things. Because of the amount of people there, it's always worth putting something on which means if you have a scroll through their website on that tournament section you will see there are tons and tons and tons of opportunities for you next up in a similar vein are talks and scheduled games so these are the things that you're going to need to book yourself onto in the same way you would need to on those tournaments that i said about and to an extent maybe with some of the play testing but Talks themselves are, you're looking at some really epic speakers. People going, I want to talk about this aspect of the industry, do you want to come along? So you're hearing from very different types of groups, from, from manufacturing options to big names in the industry, like Ian Livingston's doing something. There's bound to be something that is of interest, so it's worth looking at those and which ones you want to see or hear from about various different topics within the industry. Add to that, you've got things like The Dark Room, which were a big deal for UK Games Expo. People are very excited about getting tickets for this and you have to be quick so that they don't sell out. But I don't want to spoil it too much, so check it out if it's something you might be interested in. But ultimately, there are lots of different types of seminars, of talks, of things that you can get involved in. And for scheduled games, you're looking at things like book yourself onto an RPG. They take a little while to do you need to know how many players are going to be involved so you ideally need to book ahead of time but you can pick from such a range of different games i scrolled through there before doing this and realized there were some rpgs i'd never even heard of that were being taught or being played and they are ones that i'm considering going that sounds amazing i think i might check that out Another thing to look out for at UK Games Expo is the food. I can't stop talking about the food when I go to these places because you normally get the good food trucks and you go and you're like, oh, it's a really long day and I'm really tired, but I'm really excited and I'm having a great time. But I can also get really nice Greek food or I can also get this really cool combination of stuff that I've never heard of. How wonderful is this? The full list is available. It's also at the Hilton, just so you know. So it's a little bit of a walk from the main event. There's a couple of things inside the main halls as well. But for a short, I think, 10 minute walk it's well worth wandering over to be able to get Greek food to be able to get hot dogs to be able to get crepes burgers Mexican food the like there's tons there's a lot of choices they have announced them I have checked them out I have already pre-planned which ones I'm having on which day and I think you should do lastly although this list is by no means exhaustive because there are a lot of things going on from podcasts to competitions to filmings to all sorts of things and even stuff to go and look at we're trying to keep it like to the core tenants here of stuff that you really should be aware of to be able to have the best day but don't be afraid to have a nosy through don't be afraid to find something else but we'll talk about that in a moment the last one i'm going to talk about is the uk games expo awards now the reason i'm mentioning them is because it can be quite overwhelming knowing what to look for or what sort of things you're interested in especially if you're casual gaming you've got your normal games you go and then you see two huge halls worth of exhibitors and you go Oh my goodness where do i start one thing to bear in mind is the uk games expo award so they've announced these ahead of time the winners are available but you could potentially look at it and go okay i'm a strategy gamer by choice this game i've never heard of this game i do you know what i'm gonna go seek out that game and see if it's worth playing is this the game of uk games expo just gives you a nice sort of streamlined option for when everything else feels a little bit overwhelming but also they're great games they're worth knowing about so the very last part of this video is to help you plan your day. So I have just a few tips that I think are important and I think are worth knowing because otherwise it can seem very overwhelming. So if you've been to UK Games Expo before, you'll have a rough idea of the things you want to do. Stick to that. If you've never been before, the first thing I want you to do is to figure out if there's anything that has a time attached to it that you want to go to. So do you want to go to any talks? Do you want to play an RPG or a game that has a specific time on it? Do you want to go play tournaments? All of these things you will need to be at a certain place at a certain time. Figure out what those are, get those booked in first, and then you almost have a structure of, okay, on Saturday I'm playing this at 11, so I need to be there by this time, and yeah, I can probably squeeze in this beforehand, or the likes. Gives you a basic framework, do that first. Second of all, figure out if there are specific stands that you want to go to. Now, I am very much a 
I'd rather get there and wander and see what's there, but equally I have the benefit from the magazine of knowing a lot of these things. So I'm looking for things that are new to me or different, but I tend to keep quite up to date with the news themselves. If you are not and you just play for funsies, it can be a very, very overwhelming. So work out if there are any specific stands you really, really want to spend time at. It might be that you choose to tackle those first so you know what's going on. It might be that you just keep them in mind as you're wandering so you know, oh, somewhere around here was the Modifia store. Somewhere around here as Modi were doing demos. Somewhere around here was Tabletop Gaming Magazine. It just stops you from going home and seeing someone talking about something and going, oh no, I've, I, I really wanted to see that and I forgot because I got so overwhelmed by everything else and now I've missed my chance to see them. You're protected from that if you've got a bit of a plan. However, my rule number three of things that you should consider when you're planning is actually the opposite. It's to build in time where you don't know what you're gonna do. Because as much as it's wonderful to be like, right, okay, I'm gonna play test it this time and I'm gonna run this tournament, I'm gonna do this and I'm also gonna do this and I'm gonna do that you're not going to find anything new by doing so. If you've got a big gap on a Saturday morning because you've booked into loads of stuff on Saturday afternoon, great, go find something cool. Your new favourite game may be waiting for you, but you're not going to know if you're not outside of your expectations. So it's worth having a wonder. It's worth building in time, not just to play games, but also to find new ones. So there you have it. Beginner's Guide to UK Games Expo ticked. All of the cool things, I wanna hear your favorite things to do and I'd love if you came back after you've been. Let me know what you thought of it, which bits you did enjoy the most and whether those tips worked for you. But in the meantime, don't think I've mentioned it, we're there, we'll see you there. Come and say hi, it would be lovely to speak to you. And don't forget to pick up copies of the magazines. We've got some cool offers going on. You would be gutted to miss it, so don't. We'll see you there. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.